Hey friends, welcome to Faithful Life Podcast. I'm Matt Jacobson of FaithfulMan.com. And I'm Lisa of Club31Women.com. We've been married for 27 years. We have eight fantastic kids. And we have a deeper, richer love than when we were married. Yep, it can happen. And it can happen for you too. So join us each week as we explore what it means to be a biblical Christian in our marriage, parenting, church, and culture. It's about growing, maturing, and being equipped for the faithful life God is calling you to. So let's get started. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Faithful Life Podcast. Yes. Hello, friends. We're so glad you're here. All right. If you're new, then we just are happy to have you on board. And for those who have been around for a while, we really appreciate you. And Mm -hmm. we really are super grateful for the people who have left reviews. Thank you so much for that. We're going to ask you to do that. If you're enjoying the podcast, please go and leave a review. Just a written review. It doesn't take too much time. And it's really super beneficial. Absolutely helps getting the word out. And also takes just a second to hit that star review. We'd love that if you do that. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who took those screenshots of the podcast shared on your social media. Oh, yeah. We really, we were encouraged by that. We were had a chance to share those to our people as well. So if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and doing the same thing with the screenshot of the podcast, either the whole thing or just whatever episode you might be particularly enjoying. Mm-hmm. And we'll take it from there. So thank you. Absolutely. And if you do that, take that screenshot, share it on your social media. Be sure and tag Faithful Life. Oh, yes. All right. right. And uh, that'll also help in a big way getting the word out. So we really appreciate it. All right. Love you guys. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, listen, we just got back from the frozen north. Yes, we just got back from our trip to Toronto. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for everyone who prayed for us. We felt your prayers seriously the whole time, even though there were early hours and late hours and a very full schedule. We were healthy. I wasn't throwing up. Yeah, no throwing up in the hotel room (laughs) this time. It made it much more fun. (laughs) (laughs) So... And uh, we did. We just felt great. And and the Lord opened so many doors that yeah, even ones awesome. we weren't expecting and had opportunity to share our messages about about our love for marriage, about God's desire for us. And it was a great way to get the word it out. It really was. We're on two shows. We were on 100 Huntley Street and on A Better Us. Three segments on 100 Huntley Street. And I think we did nine segments. Mm-hmm. They were shorter teaching segments, but nine segments on A Better Us. Those are going to be coming out in the next few days and over the course of the season in the case of The Better Us. So uh, it was really great. And there's some ongoing opportunities we're going to tell you about as well Mm -hmm. that came out of that, ongoing discussions. And so it's kind of exciting and kind of fun. But we're back in the saddle. We're here. And we were up there promoting our books, 100 Ways to Love Your Husband, 100 Ways to Love Your Wife. And, of course, those come in the paperback editions or the gift editions with the gold foil embossed hardcovers. And uh, that, so that's what we were doing. It was really great. We really had a good time talking about those books. And uh, because Valentine's oh, yeah, coming up, absolutely. can I just jump in there? Go because yep. this is how I think. <laughs> but I think, hey, if you're one of those that it's Valentine's has snuck up on you and you like to do a little gift exchange, these books, 100 Ways to Love Your Husband, mm-hmm. 100 Ways to Love Your Wife, make a beautiful gift really for do. Valentine's Day. Because it's a gift for both of you, not just you, not just him. It's for something you're doing together for your marriage. Yeah. And these gift editions are gorgeous. I highly recommend them. Or, But if you're on a tight budget and you want the paperback versions, they're on big sale on Amazon. Basically, the two for the price of one if you get the bundle on Amazon. Mm-hmm. And much, much more. <laughs> If you have prime shipping, you can get them either the next day or within two days. Mm-hmm. So um, I know I ordered them, and I got them literally the next day. It's yeah. crazy. And some people like to buy on ChristianBook.com. They have the older covers, uh, all, but also for an amazing deal for both of okay. those. So it's available there, too. So anywhere you like to get the books, they're available. Make awesome gifts. In fact, we heard from, well, we hear from people all the time, but I just wanted to tell you about Kathy. So Kathy wrote in and, uh, and shared with us. She said, hey, uh, listen, my husband got us these books. Mm -hmm. And she said, I just want to tell you, it has turned our marriage around. She said 360 degrees. So maybe she meant 180. I'm not sure. But anyway. (laughs) No, I knew what she meant. (laughs) She just said said it just completely turned around, transformed. mm -hmm. And we are doing so awesome. These books are helping so much, which I confess is still, I love hearing that. Mm -hmm. It's so encouraging. It's encouraging. But the books are so simple and so doable. They're just do a, a lot of women say, hey, this is a book my husband will read. It's nice and short. So mm-hmm. anyway, so that's what we were up in Toronto for. And it was a really great trip. Just so much came out of it. Thanks for praying. Really appreciate that. But listen, we're going to dive into our topic today. What is our topic? Surprisingly romantic doable dates that won't break the bank Woo! for Valentine's Day. <laughs> 
and the whole year, right? <laughs> Yay. So uh, we're uh, strongly in favor. It's one of my favor, favorite topics. <laughs> <laughs> strongly in favor of loving each other even after Valentine's Day. Imagine that. It's kind of un-American, right? Just like continuing on with Valentine's Day after the day's over. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Well, listen, it is just around the corner. February 14th coming right up. I'm sure all of you have your Valentine's Day plans firmly in place, right? Oh, maybe not. All right. Well, some of you do, and good for you who do. But uh, those who don't, hey, I get it. Man, I used to hate this this day. I, uh, Valentine's Day was just, it's like this dark cloud looming on the horizon. I saw all these artful marketing people <laughs> trying to coerce me out of giving them money to love my wife one day a year. I wasn't going to do it. You really were a Scrooge <laughs> <laughs> about that. So, In other ways, you were wonderful and romantic. The other holidays, but not Valentine's Day. So, but anyway, so, but I don't know. I, somehow I've kind of softened in mm-hmm. my, you know. I've won you over. <laughs> something's happened. Uh, and so now it's just another reason for us to find a way to hang out and love each other in a special way. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Dates that won't break the bank that you can you can uh, use on Valentine's Day or the rest of the year. And, uh, you know, it's really just about, I mean, you can make it about whatever you want it to be about, right? We want to, to focus on the aspect of marriage that is romance. We want to talk about pursuing each other in a romantic way and how specifically and directly biblical that is. I've noticed in the Christian community, there's been a bit of a, just a downplaying on the romance. Almost a backlash. Yeah, Yeah. almost. Yeah. Just putting it down. Like it has no place. It's really about being committed to one another, which it is, Mm -hmm. you know, it's about being true to one another, which it is. So it's it's about what God's doing in the world. Right. And it is. Uh, And so we embrace and applaud all of that. But somehow in all of that, this idea that romance has no place in your marriage or is just silly, or almost frivolous. Like, man, I just don't agree with that. In fact, neither we, does the Bible. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's going to yeah. get there. It's going right. there. Yeah. But yes, it's it's and, and the fact that our hearts long for romance. And I'm going to speak primarily to the women right now, because those mm-hmm. are the ones that I know best. But mm-hmm. you can see it by their desire to watch all the romantic movies, the Hallmark movies. And mm-hmm. if you ever spent any time looking at bestseller lists, like in Christian books, you would think, oh, it's going to be this you know, big book, maybe it's mm-hmm. going to be Max Lucado or, yeah. but you're actually, what you're going to see are Christian romances Isn't that interesting? Uh, and they okay. swamp the bestseller list. So that just tells you that women are longing for romance. The thing is, is that we let the busyness of life and the activity and noise of our culture turn our lives into this math equation mm-hmm. that, you know, just, we, we've got to get up in the morning, the, the alarm goes off, got to get up, eat breakfast, get ready, get to work, get the kids where they need to go. Just on and on and on and on and pick up the kids, uh, get them to lessons or whatever they're doing yeah, in press, some sports. Hurry. Yeah, press, yep. hurry. Go, keep yep. going, keep going. Come home, have dinner, throw something together. Uh, all right. And then we got the busy activities in the, in the evening, get going. And then we just do it again and again and again, day after day. And then read your romantic novel, I guess, in the evening. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> but that's not the way it should be, right? But, but the thing is, is we're just missing out on this most um, wonderful aspect of the relationship, this wonderful good gift from God that is part of... A marriage relationship. Now, listen, in a 30-minute podcast, we can't talk about every aspect of this most complex subject, marriage, love, romance, and all that it entails. So we're not trying to. We're just talking about this one aspect of it, romance, and are we proactively pursuing each other? And we're going to talk about why we should. I think sometimes, as Christians, we can be in danger of Mm over-spiritualizing the marriage relationship. Just focusing so much on the spiritual aspect of it that we're missing a wonderful part of it that was God's design and his desire for us. And so we just want to make sure that we're not doing that. You know, what did God say? I mean, God has spoken about marriage. What has God said in the word regarding marriage, regarding the good gift that it is? Well, it says, when a man finds a wife, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Okay, that's Proverbs 18, 22. Yeah, right? A good thing. He who finds a wife, imagine that. It's a good thing, you know? And the thing about words is they have definitions, right? So you go and you look at the definition of that word, that phrase, good thing, and it includes the concept of being glad and being happy. Mm -hmm. That sounds just like a positive experience, this joy that I'm getting. Not just a duty. From this relationship. It's not just a duty, Mm -hmm. and it's not just for something else that's in the spiritual realm, but rather a good gift for Mm. me to enjoy and you doing that. Hey ladies, I just wanted to mention a book. It's newly released. It's by Sheila Walsh and it's called Praying Women. 
And it's something I'm very excited about. It's a message I'm excited about. And it's not like a frilly, foofy prayer book. This is a serious get down on your knees and change the world with your prayers. So I'm just gonna give you some chapter titles to give you an idea. It's things like pray because God is waiting for you. Pray and don't give up. Pray hardest when it's hardest to pray. Pray when God seems silent. And and on and on it goes through. And it it's talking about that praying through those seasons of life where you are calling out to God and wondering, is he listening? Does he care? Is he answering? And she has a lot of scripture throughout the entire book that talks about prayer and what God says about it in his word. So I want to encourage you, pick up a copy of Praying Women by Sheila Walsh. Well, it's also found in Proverbs 5.18 when it says, Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth, which I sometimes remind you. <laughs> Rejoice, well, my love. Well, if you have to remind me that I'm supposed to rejoice, maybe we should think about what you're doing that brings on that necessity. <laughs> Only when I'm being annoying. All right. So, and I'm going to encourage you, like, go look up uh, Let They Fountain Be Blessed. Go kind of check it out. All right. It's talking about this wonderful physical aspect of our relationship. And in uh, the next verse, right, if we just follow on with the next verse. We don't have to do that. Anymore. Yeah, we do, because it's in the Bible, honey. <laughs> so it's Proverbs 5, 19, and it says, let her be as the loving hind, okay? This is a deer, a hind is a deer, a loving deer. Well, just let your thoughts go there a little mm. bit, right? And as the pleasant row, right? Let her breasts satisfy you at all times. That doesn't sound to me like one of the spiritual disciplines, okay? <laughs> okay? But it is an instruction in scriptures. Let her breasts satisfy you, oh. right? And how do they do that, okay? So <laughs> okay. you don't want Keep to Keep going. All There's right? more to the verse. And then it says, and be ravished always with her love, all right? Be ravished with her love. What does that word ravished mean? Hmm. It means intoxicated drunk okay this is god's wonderful good gift for you to experience enjoy to the fullest in marriage and let's not just let that get sideswiped by a singular focus on only the spiritual aspect of this relationship it's multifaceted as we said but we're talking about the romantic side of it right now. And look at these verses that speak so directly to that. Yeah, and we can forget that there is an entire book of the Bible dedicated to the romantic love of a man and woman, the Song of Songs. I remember the first time, I, I don't know if it was the first time I read it, but certainly the first time I read it with understanding. And I was single in my early 20s. And I remember reading it thinking, do people realize that this is in here? How did this get in the Bible? I was just... I thought the Bible was supposed to be holy. I was very shocked. <laughs> so. um, but... You're right. What you're saying, God wants us to understand his goodness as a father who knows how to give good gifts. Absolutely. Now, of course, there is a spiritual element and aspect to the Song of Songs, but we can't let that be the only focus and obscure what Lisa is blushing over right now. <laughs> yes. So now, so here's the thing. If, if you're one of those people who just, you're not doing V-Day, it's not happening. I get it. I get it. But but don't miss out on the other 364 days of the year where God is wanting you to enjoy this aspect of this good gift that he's given you. It's here for all of us. And God wants us to be proactive, bless each other, and pursue each other in these things. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people don't know where even to begin with this kind oh, of thing. That's true. It's like they've forgotten yeah. or maybe they have never even really knew how. And Maybe they believe that the big gestures are the only thing that matters, and so these little things don't count. And maybe you don't even try because they're not doing the big grand gestures. Right, it's just yeah. intimidating or mm -hmm. expensive or all those things. Mm -hmm. Or I've heard from a lot of men who have quietly admitted that they're just not sure how his wife is going to respond. Mm -hmm. Is she, is she going to reject him? Is she going to belittle him even or just, mm -hmm. you know, not really value? That insecurity. His, yeah, value. So we, I think often, I just women, I'm just going to remind you that – Men do need our affirmation. Mm -hmm. They aren't unfeeling. And so let's remember they have feelings as well. So with that kind of thing. And then, um, like you said, a lot of times it's just plain old budget that, that keeps us from doing anything. And Matt and I have been there many times over yeah. our seasons of life. And we've actually gotten quite creative about mm -hmm. coming up with 
romantic, inexpensive dates. In fact, I teased him. I said, hey, I'm a cheap date. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's true. I just, I just want it to be thoughtful. I want it to be something other than our daily life. Mm -hmm. And, and you focused on me and our relationship and I'm good to go. Yeah, absolutely. So listen, that's what we're going to talk about right now. We're going to talk about five surprisingly romantic dates that won't mm -hmm. break the bank. And these are things that uh, you can employ and they're very easy to do. It doesn't matter where you live. And so let's just dive in right now. So first and foremost, starting out on the cheapest of the cheap. <laughs> That's a great intro. Uh, inexpensive of the inexpensive. That's maybe. much better, much better. Much better than cheap. Okay. Yes. So the home date, all right? I'm a fan of the home date, believe the it or not. The home date, all right? So if you're going to have a date at the house earlier in the day, go and get a couple of desserts, maybe a couple of pieces of chocolate, something from the bakery that you know your wife will love. Just go get something, something simple, something inexpensive, but you know you'll both enjoy. Okay, I got a little tip here. Yep. Give her a little heads up that something's coming so she knows to look forward to this. Because if you just show up unexpected and- With a big plan. And right, she know and that she, her, she, her head might not be in that space. At least that's the way I am, because I'm a planner. So yeah. I kind of like to know that, I don't okay. need to know what it is, but let her know that something's coming. All right, so uh, put the kids to bed maybe a little earlier, mm -hmm. or yeah, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, should you bribe him with a- movie or something? Um, we've done that before. Okay, we have. It's true. <laughs> all right. And then uh, light a candle. All right. Mm -hmm. You've got a candle in your house somewhere, but you know, what's our favorite candle company now? Chosencandles.com. You should go check them out for sure. We could talk more about that uh, maybe later or in another podcast, but, mm -hmm. uh, but light a candle and definitely check out chosencandle.com and put on some soft music. Maybe you like country western, maybe you like classical, maybe you like 80s. All right? Jazz. Something, something that you know you'll love. Mm -hmm. Put that on. Folk music, little guitar music in the background. Christopher Parkening, wonderful. Classical uh, guitar. Classical guitar, beautiful. And then you can make some drinks that you both enjoy. Mm -hmm. Something right. special, maybe something you don't normally have, but you both enjoy. And then sit down together and intentionally ask some questions. And these are fun, interesting questions. And they have nothing to do with business, the business of running the home, of oh, yeah. your office, uh, your grocery list. Yeah, like, that's not what that we're is, discussing. This is all off the table. No then, errands. If Johnny needs diapers, we're not going to, hey, you know what? Should we stop at Costco and get the big box of diapers? Yeah, this is not about business or errands or anything like that. So if you need some ideas, some of the things that Matt and I like to talk about are things like, what's your favorite memory you have of us together? Mm -hmm. Maybe earlier on, maybe recently, just... What are those, some of those things? And this can start a wonderful conversation. Absolutely. They're just conversation starters. How about a favorite place you've visited together? Or Lisa and I, we play the what if game. Yeah, right? that's my favorite game. <laughs> or a place you'd like to visit, right? So we just, okay, no, no holds barred. As and, if we had no budget. <laughs> yeah, no, just, yeah, well, we don't. That's the problem. <laughs> that's why it's the what if game. But anyway, <laughs> so... <laughs> anyway, but but just talk about where you've been, maybe uh, where you've been, you've enjoyed, or where you'd like to go and what you'd like to see. Another thing you can do is just express appreciation for maybe the three things you love about each other and be specific and just say, I really appreciate this about you, or I love when you do that, or I love that about you. Mm -hmm. And don't take it for granted that they already know it, because for one thing, I personally never get tired of hearing that some that he appreciates me or values me. So take the time to articulate those things that you love about the other person. Absolutely. And here's the thing. If you can't think of anything, you're not trying hard enough. Oh, okay? <laughs> I was wondering what you were going to say. Just okay. saying. Yes. You can come you up can with, with three some, things. Absolutely, you can. And then, all right, here's how we're going to end the evening. Mm. Well, I'm not saying this is the very end, but <laughs> run a hot bath for the two of you. Mm. All right? Run a hot bath, a little bath salts, a little something in there. Or take a shower together if you don't have a bath big enough for you both to get in. Take a shower together and just enjoy being with each other. Mm -hmm. And so that's the home date. That's just an idea for the date at home. All right? All right. What's next? All right. Date idea number two is go on a walking or hiking date. Mm -hmm. And that just involves getting to a trail, walking along a river, maybe even finding a golf course mm -hmm. and going for a walk together. Earlier on in our marriage, Matt and I lived in the city in Portland. And so for us, that meant going to, there was a golf course nearby that yeah. had a little walking trail that went all the way around it. And so we Glendivere, would just, I think yeah, that's what, that's what it was. Yep. And we would just walk around the trail and hold hands and mm -hmm. talk. And yep. 
And it was just a beautiful little oasis in the middle of the city. Yeah, absolutely. And and it seems not to matter where you live. There's a trail somewhere mm -hmm. where you can go on a hike. And if you're in a more rural place like we are now, mm -hmm. you can head up the hills. You can go up the river. You can. There's there's always something to do. So we're just going to suggest while you're going for the hike, if the trail's wide enough, hold hands while you're walking together, touch each other. Mm -hmm. Or when you stop, just slip your arm around each other. Be close. Pull each other close on that hike. All right. And then afterwards, stop back at a cafe for coffee, tea, whatever you like. Just And it's not expensive, right? Just get a drink and mm -hmm. be together. And then express something, again, express something that you love about each other. Just make an effort to express what you love, each, uh, uh, love about each other and appreciate about each other. Maybe talk about the coming season ahead of you. This is a good chance to talk about and dream together about what, what comes, what's going to be ahead of us in mm -hmm. this year and what kind of love and marriage do we want to enjoy. Absolutely. All right, so that's the walking hiking date. All right, inexpensive, surprisingly romantic date number three, winter zone date. All right, mm. it is February after all, and a lot of us live where there's snow. And so if that's you, then tubing, sledding, snowshoeing. A lot of times we do this in the winter for the kids. It's always something that's organized for the kids. But you know what? It makes a great couple's activity, just the two of you. So it's if, far more romantic and, and fun because you're not really worried about the kids or right. who's having a good time. It's just mm -hmm. you and you and him. Yep. It's very fun. If you don't have kids, then you're free to do it. If you do have kids, then a couple of inexpensive ways to handle that is maybe trade off with another couple. You're going to go this time. They're going to go that time. And just trade a couple in your church that you know, somebody that you know that you can trust. That's obviously incredibly important. And, uh, you know, a lot of parents are really on point these days about that. And sometimes we've had family watch our kids because remember we have eight kids so we we got really good at this you know Absolutely. finding creative ways to find child care for our kids that we could slip away for a few hours. Yep yeah. and so yeah so and bring a warm blanket some hot chocolate thermos maybe a little snack mm -hmm. right not expensive but something that you're doing together just the two of you and it's kind of fun to snuggle under a warm blanket in the middle uh -huh. of winter. That's Sit fun. close snuggle. Sit close and share the blanket. All right that's the winter zone date number three. Okay. What's number four? Number four is the inner city walking date. A lot of people live in the city, just yeah. right in a big city. What do you do? All right. So Matt and I have also done this. Uh, we enjoy walking around the, the city, around the town, and we'll hold hands and we'll just like poke into little shops. You and know, a, lot a lot of people say, you know what, we just never hold hands. And you know what? All you have to do is hold hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's right. Just do it. If you're the woman or the man, reach up, hold the hand of your spouse be together, touch each other. And, uh, you know, Lisa and I have been holding hands for years, and we always reach for each other, and we just want to encourage you to reach for each other physically that way, too. It's just a great connecting point, a great way to be together. So we want to encourage you that. But I cut you off. Keep going. Oh, I was just saying that, and this is window shopping. This isn't like shopping shopping. This is just kind of fun looking at little boutiques, maybe, or sometimes they'll have an, an area where there's a farmer's market. It's just, that's very fun to walk around. And some people don't like to even do that. They just you know, would rather have a root canal without an aesthetic <laughs> than to go into a store and look at stuff. And that's okay. There's a lot of people like that, too. Maybe just find a park bench to sit and watch people go by. That's kind of fun, too. Yeah, that's another good Absolutely. idea. Absolutely. Just be together. And we'll find a food cart that will um, go and just try out different kinds of foods that we don't normally try. Or okay. That kind of so gets, gets kind of an adventure. Here, I'm going to interrupt you again. Oh, sorry. Okay. So I've never been a food cart guy. It just hasn't been my thing. I kind of like to go to a place that's maybe a little more restaurant. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, anyway, the point being is my friend Josh Reese said, you know what? You're missing out in life. Okay. Oh, I didn't know it was Josh yeah. that. Uh... It was Josh that said okay. this. Absolutely. Thank you, Josh. And, and uh, his wife is, by the way, Cat's in the Kitchen. She's a food blogger. So these people know all about amazing, beautiful gourmet food. And you should totally check them out. Okay. Cats and that's in the Kitchen. Cat's C-A-T-Z in the kitchen. Yeah, absolutely. You'll, you'll love. She's what... my favorite recipe resource. Just saying. You'll love what she does. Everything they do is beautiful. Everything they touch is gorgeous. So, But anyway, so these people that know all about amazing food, he said to me, you know what? You are missing out. If you're not checking out these food carts, there's some amazing food in these food carts. So I thought, okay, on one of these dates that we had in the city, we're, we're just going to go to the food cart, and we're going to have lunch there. And that's what we did, and we found this amazing Middle Eastern place. I'm telling you, it was like the best of everything at an amazing spice market. It was it just filled your nostrils and your mouth with flavor. It was just awesome in every possible way. So made I felt a like we had discovery. traveled to some exotic place because it was so <laughs> it was authentic, really you know. And very inexpensive. So here we were on a walking date, holding hands, walking through the city, had lunch there. 
inexpensive walking date. We're together just being with each other. So inner city walking date. You can totally do it and you won't break the bank. Okay. Another fun thing to do is to go to an ice rink. A lot of even cities have ice rinks to offer or even a roller skating rink if that's more your thing. And it's the kind of thing you did when you were kids, but it's so much more fun, (laughs) or it can be, (laughs) when you're adults. That old skill will come back to you and you can just skate around the rink, you can hold hands, you can fall down, and you can laugh, and it's it's a good time. And well, it's one of those things that's fun, even if it kind of makes it fun, even if you're not good, right? And they'll play old music. It's it's very yeah. nostalgic. <laughs> Absolutely. And what a better reason to hold on to each other than we could fall down if we're not careful. <laughs> that's right. So, but, but anyway, and then afterwards, go out for coffee or go out for a, a little dessert or just something. Uh, and again, inexpensive, fun evening together. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that was our five surprisingly romantic but inexpensive dates that won't break the bank. So the thing is, is that some of you are still going to go out to dinner and you want to do the big dinner thing. And by the way, if that's you, you'd better make your reservations because that's not happening around here in Bend. If you don't get those reservations in, man, you are going to be... It fills up fast. It fills up fast. So take care of that right away if that's your plan. But Lisa and I kind of have a little way of doing dinner that's way less expensive than just doing the big full-on dinner. So it's kind of fun, and it's less crowded if you go early. So uh, sometimes as early as 4.30 in the afternoon, they have happy hour, which isn't just about drinks. They almost always have meals for yeah. yeah this meal. And you could get different kinds of plates. We'll go to maybe a Middle Eastern place or a Thai place and then try different little dishes and that's very fun, I think, and romantic. And we, you know, swap and eat off each other's plate. So that's fun and not so expensive. So by the way, just a little shout out for Jules. If you're ever in Bend, go to Happy Hour at Jules. Oh yeah, that's y- our. You, you won't be sorry. I'm going there tonight, actually. Oh, you are. <laughs> but no, <laughs> with a friend. So oh, fine. Sorry. I get, oh, great. Here, here with the yes. kids. <laughs> wow. Have a great time. <laughs> anyway. But hey, those are our suggestions, just simple, inexpensive things. But what is at the core of all of this? It's about being proactive. It's about taking a step and making it happen. And you know, your spouse is gonna love this. So don't hesitate, even if you're not a big Valentine's Day aficionado. Don't hesitate, make a date. You go on one of these cheap dates, Go do the home date. Just make it happen. And if you want, we'll put some details. I'll just put this list in the show notes and you can see uh, if you forget some of these ideas, but be proactive, make it and happen. And if you're a woman listening to this and he does make an effort to do a little something for Valentine's Day, the more you can affirm him, the more you can express your joy in just being with him and that he's trying to make something lovely, the better time you'll have and the better chance you'll have that he'll try again. So for all of you women I know that that would maybe would like a little more romance in your relationship, this is a great chance for you to encourage that. Awesome. So, hey, everybody, romance, it's not the main thing in marriage. It's not the most important thing in marriage, but it's not nothing. And it's God's idea, and he gave it to us for a good gift. So we want you to enjoy that in this season. So have a great time. So great to be with you. We really appreciate you being here today. Have a wonderful Valentine's Day for those of you who are celebrating it. And... Remember, be proactive and pursue each other. Remember, God is our rock and our redeemer. He already knows what your week holds. He knows exactly what you're facing. He loves you and is for you. So this week, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. 